Okay, we're going to be working through several proofs. And I think it's important for you to stop and pause when you need to uh, make some understanding of it. Okay, so I may be going a little bit faster than you can write, so just make sure you're pausing to work to work through them. Okay, so this first one, the first thing I always want you to do is take your given and always label your picture first. Okay. Now, this one already happens to be labeled, but I just want you to get into the routine of it because sometimes they're not. And as you move further into proofs, they're not gonna be labeled for you. So just get into the habit of, of labeling the proof. Okay, so we know that those lines are parallel and that's always gonna be your first answer. Okay, when you're doing a proof, if you were taking a test, this would be worth eight points down here and that's four point, one point for each. So that, those first, that top line right there is what I refer to as two give me points because the first thing you're always gonna do is write down your given and then state that it's given. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is we can't, if we're trying to prove that angle two is congruent to angle seven, we can't just jump to it because of what we know about angles. We're gonna have, we have to use what we, else we know. Okay, so we're gonna look at what other angle, we know we're looking at angle two, so what other, other angle is congruent to angle two? Okay, so that was our goal. Two is congruent to seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and state, I know that two is congruent to five. The reason I know two is congruent to five is because they're vertical angles, okay? So then I'm gonna have to state, well, wh what do I know about five compared to seven? I know that they're congruent, and the reason I know that they're congruent is because those are corresponding angles, okay? Which then goes ahead and tells me that since they're both congruent to angle five, then they're congruent to each other, and that is the transitive property. Okay, now I want you to notice over here, sometimes I do my angles like this, whoops. Sometimes I do my angles like this, and sometimes I do my angle like that. It's the same thing, so don't let that confuse you. I'm just bad at keeping consistent, okay? Um, the next thing they ask you to do here is go through and, do, and prove the exact same thing using a different method, okay? So it's really gonna be a lot of the same process. We're gonna start, start with our given, okay? So I know, and I'm gonna look at other angle, that, a different angle that angle two is congruent to. Well, angle two is congruent to angle four, and I know that. My reasoning is that those are corresponding angles. Since I compared angle two to angle four, and my goal is to prove two congruent to seven, then I need to compare four to seven. So I'm gonna compare four to seven. I know those are congruent because they're vertical angles. And then again, since I proved they were both congruent to angle four, then they're gonna be congruent to each other. And the reason is the transitive property. So on this one, they're asking us to prove that angle one is congruent to angle seven, or sorry, prove that angle one and angle seven are supplementary angles, and given that J is uh, parallel to K. So that's a little funky. Normally they have the proof given on top, but so again, the first thing I want you to do is write down your given and mark it on your picture, okay? Uh, the next statement that they make is that one and four are supplementary angles. So one and four, are both inside the lines there, so those are same side interior angles, and we know from the theorem that same side interior angles are supplementary, so that's just, our reasoning is that they're same side interior angles. Okay, the next statement there is that if I add the, the measures of those two angles, I get 180 degrees. And the reason that we know that is because that there's states up above that they're supplementary. If they add up to 180, that's just the definition of supplementary that allowed me to write that. Okay, then they make the statement that is angle one, or sorry, angle four is equal to angle seven. Okay, so that really should say the measure, so pop an M in there if, it, if I didn't fix that on the notes, because measures are equal and angles are congruent. So the measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle seven. The reason that we know that is because those angles are vertical angles. 
and all vertical angles are congruent or and have the same measure. Okay. Next, if we replace the measure of angle four with measure of angle seven because they're equal, then we plug it in there and we have this statement came down here with measure of angle seven written in. So that's just the substitution property. Since they were equal here, we can replace it. And lastly, if the two angles, if the measures of the two angles add up to 180, then by, by the definition of supplementary, then the two angles are supplementary because their sum is 180 degrees. All right, last example. Okay, this picture especially, the more involved they get, the more you have to really pay attention to what they're asking you to do. Okay, and make sure that you label your pictures. So the first thing that they stated was um, line A, segment AS is parallel to segment BT. That was given up in the top. So that was our first given. Notice that there's two givens up there. Okay, so I have it labeled on my picture and I have that there. Then they don't jump to the next given. They, they make a statement about angle two and angle five. So angle two and angle five, off of those lines that they marked per perpendicular, are being cut by that transversal um, SB. Okay, so we know because those lines are perpendicular and that's a transversal, that angles two and angle five, are their measures are the same because they're alternate interior angles because of their position there. Okay, then they go back and say measure four is equal to measure angle five and that was given in our, from our given up there. Okay, so I already have in my picture two, two marked equal to five, so their angles marked the same, so now I'm going to mark angle four the same also. Okay, then they tell me, they have the statement, measure angle two is equal to measure angle four. Well, how did they get there? Where did that come from? Okay, so up above in statements two and three, they have measure angle two equal to five and measure angle four equal to five. So that means two and four have to equal each other by the transfer property. The next statement, they have measure angle one equal to measure angle four. Okay, when I go back up and look at my picture, I have line AS and line BT that are marked parallel, and that line RT is a transversal there. So angles one and angles four are congruent because position wise on those parallel lines, cut that by that transversal, they are in, uh, they're corresponding and corresponding angles are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. And then again, from step four and five, I have measures angle one and measure angle two, both equal to measure angle four, which makes one and two congruent to each other, again, by the transitive property.